Welcome to TradeTheNBA.com. This is John. This report is for the 12th of June. And happy birthday to my lovely wife as we celebrate. You probably won't see me around for trading, but that's okay because everything's already been pre-decided with our indicator readings. Steel, ooh, dips all the way below, below the negative 13 there. Small dip, but still maintaining that below. All we were looking for was a retrace to... Let's mark it on there just for the fun of it. 19.37 and three quarters, which leads to the next question. What was the low of the day? Slide it in here. I don't think it quite got 38.50. So within three ticks, less than a point from retracing that positive extreme. But that was enough to do something significant. And yes, there it is. The long line. I'm going to shrink that, don't I? That's such a long trade. There we go. All the way from here, refresh our memories, 1868.50, and the first entry, 1867, all the way over to the finish at 1942.50. So what does that do to the numbers? Well, we can take a look at it. There we are, year to date, overall return unbelievably successful we don't need that because the trade's not open anymore so there we have it and what's our time frame a year and four months so there you have it straight for oh yeah we can look at the graph always pretty to look at the graph as it breaks above the 400 plus mark all for trading just based off of the mbi opus well the power mo opus, power mo 2 opus 2 I'm going to say that three times fast. <laughs> uh, well, before I skip out of there, let's go ahead and take a look at the 5K while we're at it because it started off pretty clean. DLC spread, boom, pre market, just kept going. Give a little buy signal, but it was in deep red trend, so we expected the low to get retested, in which case, came close right there. Some nice additional buy signals, even though it didn't do a whole lot. And then finally retested and then bounced hard again from that. And that's where we ended pretty much just flat off that choppy Wednesday. The pre-market had decided to move. Not much else there. The NQ, still not bad. I mean, yes, you've got the dip over, but that just shows you you've got a higher peak there. When the green comes back under and gives a new buy cross, it's going to be a new buy signal. So we'll be on the lookout for that. Here was the YM doing beautifully. All right, where we were looking for this dip low, 16.816, and 16.815 takes it out by a point where the S&P didn't quite. That was well within the expectation and why we talked about it for that specific reason. Just flat here with the USO, I mean, bearish a little bit with that uh, dip in the steel, slight rise of sign, but that's a big differential there. So again, all we were looking for here was the potential for a retest of the low. Didn't even get that far. TLT, we weren't seeing any happiness there, but started to get the green uh, pivot up. And if that can continue, might be worth a little bit of a push. You'll have to watch it because we're coming up deep uh, red there. And so you'll need to see the green pass over that uh, sign right there. Much the same thing we talked about gold here. And again, green not able to pass it right there. And that pivot up for cyan means nothing. Nothing positive right there. Particularly now if the green separates and we get additional movement of that cyan, we would definitely expect that uh, low retrace to take place. And a little bit of improvement there from X. If it can cross over, that could be confirmed from just breaking up into the new trend. Just kind of held flat a little bit. And CLF is more of the same. That's just been clear. We just keep moving that uh, blue triangle across. Though potential now is your oversold could cross over here real easy. You've got much lower lows on higher extreme. I like to look at those. This becomes attractive now. Somewhere around that 14 puts. Look very interesting. AIG broke down a little bit on that uh, and actually had the... Um, Cyan, move above the green for the cell. You could steal deep here, but uh, it's equivalent to like a rollover effect into it. Um, not quite uh, expecting any deep short. We were looking for this positive extreme right here to get a little bit more retest, and it did. 
all in all, beautiful. WT is an interesting one in the sense that the 78 minute here, first time this uh, steel has dipped below um, in, who geez, that's quite a while. I mean, we can scroll back in time and you can follow that sign's been, I mean, the steel has been way above, um, hasn't crossed below. So this is kind of a significant point there worth mentioning because it could lead to uh, some interesting developments. Let's take a look at the radar screen. This happens to be the NASDAQ 100. Healthy mix in there. There's a bunch of buys and sells. That's always good. Just an indication. In fact, we may even be seeing on the S&P here too many red cells, which we know indicates the potential of oversold. At least the start of it will be starting to look for new buys when that uh, takes place. So the high flyers. At all the different time frames. Pretty healthy stuff going on in there. And we'll look at some of the alert charts while we're at it. Apple, no surprise, doing just fine. Yes, you're going to get some weakness in between even, you know, up moves. Still strong displacement in relation to the cyan version of it uh, for Amazon on that one. Baidu continue to look good. So just getting your one or so days of weakness is not enough oftentimes to even cause a blimp in the chart. Fat is rolling over pretty significant off of that huge steel uh, decline spike in there, but it's just a retrace of the positive extremes. That's all, nothing more. Pretty simple. This presents the opportunity on a new buy signal, though, that uh, you'll make the higher pivot here and it could become a new buy setup since that takes place. Facebook turned around nicely off of uh, what was looking like pretty ugly for a while there, and then it made the pivot and then exploded off that and uh, just that fast, even moved the cyan underneath it. Not quite overbought in the warning zone there with the yellow. Google didn't have the greatest of charts. It just crossed over, but now you got the confirmed green above, so the potential is that this should do a little bit more than it has. We've been liking Netflix for some time, and no reason not to continue to like that. PCLN, I mentioned uh, the, right at the very end of it because I could see that we got into an extreme oversold here with this dip below the red wine, so there was concern that there could be a pretty decent pop off of that, and uh, that's why... Um, I had to take the time to go back and mention that because it was uh, something that was poignant given uh, what we were seeing from that uh, setup. And Tesla, small little pop, still off sell signal within that one. And Twitter, it had been doing a slow climb, but unfortunately that's not a good one for Twitter right there. And any further breakup of the uh, sign at this particular point I think would be uh, ugly. So. There you have it. I will be out enjoying the fine vineyards of Vinomaggio, um, birthplace of the Mona Lisa for Amy's birthday. I uh, happen to be where we uh, spent our first days after our honeymoon, so it should be an exciting time to celebrate her birthday there. And um, I will definitely be back. The alerts will be on, so no need to worry about any of that. As always, trade well. We'll talk again soon.